and welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. Telstra has 8 million pits and ducts around the country. There are estimates 10 to 20 per cent of them could contain asbestos. It's not a problem if asbestos is not disturbed. But some of those pits are being worked on for the introduction of the National Broadband Network. Some of those have been found to contain asbestos. And some processes to deal with asbestos haven't been followed. The government today brought together Telstra, which has responsibility for the pits, and other stakeholders to deal with the matter. Joining me to discuss the issues of the day this evening, Labor MP Nick Champion and Liberal MP Scott Buckholtz. Welcome to you both. Thank you. We'll go first to the Workplace Relations Minister, Bill Shorten, on his meeting today on the question of asbestos. We saw organisations taking the high road in terms of not seeking to uh, blame but rather to accept responsibility. We saw that Telstra accepted responsibility for end-to-end -to -end training throughout the system, making sure that contractors and everyone working with pits and ducts were trained adequately in the safe handling of asbestos. Telstra also accepted the need to do much better in terms of uh, respecting the anxieties of the community, particularly in Penrith and Ballarat. Nick, the minister said, and Telstra has said, these pits and ducks are Telstra's responsibility, but the minister also talked about the level of community concern there could be. Did the government have any choice but to get involved in this issue? Well, look, I think uh, asbestos is a dangerous substance, and we know it's uh, present in a variety of places in the community. I, when I was a union official, I worked with a number of major retail companies who had you know, asbestos in their buildings, and they had a register and they identified it and they made sure that uh, contractors dealt with it appropriately. Um, now, one would uh, assume that if you had a major telecommunications company with, uh, and they knew this material was in the pits and the ducts, that they would <coughs> deal with it appropriately. And that's, uh, I think, a fair community expectation for them to do as a major company. Uh, it's a fair expectation uh, that the government has of them. So, you know, it's, uh, there's legislation around it. Uh, the minister, when he was parliamentary secretary for disabilities, wrote to them uh, a couple of times, three times. Um, so, I, I mean, I think we've done all that we can do uh, to reasonably expect that this major company deals with uh, its uh, asbestos issues. Scott, do you accept that this is Telstra's responsibility and the onus is on Telstra to make sure that the processes that are already in place are followed? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, the, the currently, it is a Telstra issue, uh, but notwithstanding that, at some stage into the future, the Telstra assets will become the NBM assets, then it will be a problem for the government, whoever's but, but, in. But the Minister said uh, uh, the NBN only takes over the pits and ducts when they are fit for use, so presumably after any problems have been uh, dealt with. Absolutely, and, and, and that someone needs to be the, you know, the growing up in the room, and uh, this won't, well hopefully doesn't get used as a political football in the in the light that it has today. I think, I think the real issue is that we need to be and have suitable concern for those people that are now having NBN you know, work done in their suburbs. Um, um, we've found today that there is asbestos in the pits and I think people have a right to show concern as to uh, what the integrity of the pits outside their homes are right around Australia. Uh, Nick, the, there has been community education on and off. I know in the ACT there was quite a campaign because of asbestos in houses. Does this actually need, there need to be ongoing work, not only with the issue of, of asbestos in Telstra pits and ducts, but also the asbestos that, that home renovators might find in their houses? Well, the government's moved on a number of uh, areas to improve asbestos regulation, and that's come out of the experience of people like Bill Shorten and Greg Combe, who've obviously dealt with this issue uh, when they were union officials with James Hardy and the like. It's not something the Labor movement uh, takes lightly at all. Uh, we believe in uh, tighter scrutiny of the handling of this material, uh, not just at the legislative end, uh, but right the way through the chain. And obviously, uh, the important thing here is that you know the, the the companies and the contractors who get the contracts for dealing with this material, they've got to have really strong. Uh, you know, uh, strong oversight themselves because it's not possible for a politician here in Canberra to, uh, you know, look over every workman's shoulder. Uh, people uh, do have to, uh, they have legislative responsibility and they have per a personal responsibility to make sure the community and it's, workplaces are safe. Is there any concern, given that the NBN has been one of the government's policies which has 
received consistent, strong public support, that this may damage that public support for the policy? Well, no. People know that we need a 21st century broadband infrastructure, uh, and they know that the government has appropriately contracted this, you know, this out to. Uh, uh, MBN Co and they've appropriately reached arrangements with Telstra. But Telstra, it's Telstra's obligation to deal with this matter and they should deal with it appropriately. And I think they've accepted, uh, accepted that. Scott, do you think the difference between... The, well, there are many differences. One of the differences between this and the questions that were raised about the home insulation program mm. is in this there are agreed processes, there are known ways of dealing with it, whereas home insulation, the government had to retrofit a, a, a set of arrangements in how to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, al already since question time, I've, I've heard the commentary you know, in the news cycle that this is going to be another uh, pink bats the fiasco you know, overseen, overseen by, by NBN. Um, I, I'm mindful that this problem isn't going to go away, irrespective of what the governments look like in future years, irrespective of whether or not it's the current NBN rollout or ours, which doesn't go down, the, it goes to the node. Um, at some stage in the future, asbestos is one of those products that is just not going to go away. So um, I, I'd suggest that, that Telstra need to, to, to muscle up on this. Telstra need to uh, make sure that they've got you know, suitable procedures in, in place to deal with, with any leakage that at the paramount look after the people on the street and look after the mums and dads and the electorates right across Australia so that there is no leakage and that the integrity of Telstra's products uh, before they become the property uh, of, of the NBN. Um, and, and I suppose as a result of this, um, mums and dads out there just want to know that in their home, they're safe. We might move on now. The Treasurer Wayne Swan today joined with the Shadow Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull to look at the prospects for an Australian Republic. We are a Republic in all but name. Let's make the final step forward and become a republic so we can demonstrate to the world what a vibrant, independent, successful, fair nation we are. Secondly, you need to have the timing. There's got to be, it's got to, there's got to be the sense that this is an issue of the hour, and it isn't an issue of the hour for determination, at least for most Australians today. There's no point having another referendum that's going to be lost. I think our best chance of having a referendum which could win would be after the end of the Queen's reign. Nick, those arguing in favour of a republic will always seek to argue it. Is this the time, though, for the Treasurer of the Nation to dip his oar in this particular water? Well, look, I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And I think, look, uh, I've always thought that we have, have to have actually a lot of discussion um, uh, about uh, the republic because it goes to the fundamental way we structure our government. Uh, and, uh, and our community and our society. So uh, more rather than less discussion, I think, is ideal. And uh, I don't really agree that we, you know, we've got one shot at, at a referendum. Uh, I think in all likelihood um, it took three referendums to become a federation, to become a country. Uh, I think we, we might be looking down the barrel at a similar process where uh, by process of accident or design, uh, we sort of, you know, discuss this over a number of decades and eventually uh, wind up being a republic. Well, one of the arguments when Paul Keating raised these sorts of issues when he was Prime Minister was that people uh, didn't feel like he was dealing with their issues. He was dealing with some very big picture stuff, but not listening to the concerns of the people. Could the same accusation be levelled at the Treasurer? Well, look, I don't think so. I mean, our number one priority has always been jobs, um, and people understand that. Uh, look, I think, like I said, people uh, can associate in their minds the day-to-day, -day, everyday issues that uh, might be of concern, uh, and then they know that the nation has to have a, another dialogue, which is about the future, uh, about how we deal with things like climate change, the Asian century, and how we govern ourselves. They're all important things, and people are really interested in them. Scott, is it worth having the conversation? Oh, mate, I, I, I was just an observer of watching that, uh, that, those clips there. Can I say that it's doomed, that the whole debate before it started? Here you have Swanee saying, we need to have the debate now. Uh, Turnbull then comes out and says, oh, no, we need to have it after the rain. The first questions after, uh, after that one, when journalists were asked, invited to take questions, were about Gonski and were about asbestos. I mean, 
truly, the, uh, I'm, a, I'm a moniker, so I, 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 uh, I, I, I support that position, so I want to just put that so I'm not being biased, but I just don't see that the, the current uh, energy in, in the electorates, uh, I'm, I'm getting very few people coming up to me saying that uh, we need to bring on the Republican debate at this stage of the, the electorate cycle. At a time in the future, I tend to agree with Nick. I think we're a mature nation. I think there will be times um, into the not-too-distant future when, when, um, you know, when, when we'll have that debate again, but I'd be very surprised if it ramps up between now and September 14. Do you think it's one of those debates that will naturally come back to the front of people's minds as the population changes, as people who yeah, are young now absolutely. get a bit older. There, there, are, there are parts in the electorate cycle when, when, when you can virtually predict when stuff's going. When, when people have got money and the, the economy's strong, that's when we have a green conscience. You, you know what I mean? There are parts in, 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 in electorate cycles when you can predict that um, um, issues are going to have a better chance. And yeah, I mean, we have, have, we've been debating the monarchy for, for a long time, and I would suggest that. Uh, it won't be an issue that leaves our landscape over the next 15, 20 years. We might just go to one final issue. The Victorian city of Geelong got some good news today. They've, of course, been battered by the fact that Ford, one of its major employers, has announced that it's, it will be withdrawing from manufacturing in a few years' time. Geelong is to be the headquarters for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Nick, is, is there a case for putting more things like this into regional areas? Is it, is it a way to help bolster unemployment at a time when, when some regional areas are suffering? Well, look, I think particularly we have structural change in areas like uh, Geelong, uh, where you've got one big employer that the town's been built around for a very long time. It makes sense to seek out diverse, diverse opportunities. And one of those things is government departments and public sector employment, because you know it's not going to go away. Um, uh, so it's a very good announcement. It's been welcomed by the opposition, which I think is sensible. I don't think that's the end of the story with Geelong. They're going to have to seek private sector opportunities as well. But this is certainly, I think, a useful thing to stop the knock-on effect where you don't just lose a big employer, you lose a lot of small ones um, as the ripple effect hits. And, and, Scott, one of the reasons, or the reason that Geelong was chosen because it's the head of the, the State Transport Accident Commission, so has some had some synergies on the issue of disability. Should, should regions actively look for those sorts of synergies if they're, if they're advocating, particularly for public sector employment in their areas? Absolutely. I think this is a great day for Australia that this is, and, and hopefully we see that as being the first step towards decentralisation of our public service. I mean, I'm putting my hand up now. I mean, I want the Department of Transport and Department of Agriculture <laughs> in my electorates in the electorate of right in Queensland, and rightfully so, because of the, the points that you just made then. There are synergies. Can I tell you, there is very little synergies for the Department of Agriculture to be based in the cosmopolitan of Canberra. Uh, uh, there are there are so many there are so many positive things that can happen with regional regional st uh, stimulation, the development, the flow on effect, the multiplier effects in regional Australia. Um, there is no reason why any any public servants should be housed in Canberra and as a result uh, I'm advocating to take two two portfolios to help out. <laughs> well we'll see how that one goes. But for now Scott Buckholtz and Nick Champion, thank you very much for your time. Thank and thank you. you for joining Capitol Hill. Please be with us at the same time tomorrow. Good night.